Welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. I got a special treat. Uh, this is a, a long history of us providing value to our, our audience here. The theme tonight is awareness. We're going to be having a discussion with uh, Penny Queen. Uh, she runs the YouTube channel as well as a, a Discord group uh, for a large con constituent uh, of patrons out there interested specifically in the micro cap space. And I caught Penny about a month ago on an interview with a colleague of mine through YouTube as well. You see the theme here, we're connecting minds, we're connecting successful people with the power of YouTube. And I think it's fabulous that Penny's taken the time out of her evening to come and have this discussion with Adura, which has been uh, as of late introduced to me. I've got about 25 hours of due diligence on this project and I'm fascinated to share this with you. The theme tonight is awareness. Um, we are both uh, share owners in the company. So those disclaimers and disclosures up front for you guys. The theme here is not to hype the stock. If you want hype, go to Las Vegas or go to a theme park. That is not what we do here on this small corner of social media. Um, Penny uh, has broke this story and was one of the very early uh, content creators. Um, for her efforts, I've actually added her to my featured channels here on the Independent Investor Channel. So you can kick over to her information and her um, different conduits uh, for access to her information and to her group. Penny, I'd like to take this opportunity, welcome you to the channel, take this moment and introduce yourself to my grander audience. Thank you so much for your time this evening, Penny. Absolutely. Thank you for, for having me on. I love the chance to, to you know talk to other investors about you know, investing, uh, investing in the fundamentals of, you know, stock discovery and, and what goes into due diligence. So, and I'm always happy to find somebody that, you know, that we share a baby. So, so, <laughs> yeah, no, so, no, Aduro's one I've been following since uh, August before last. So I've gotten to see a lot of its journey as, as it's, as it's progressed. And, and yeah. it's certainly been great over the past couple of months really picked up speed, so. It, it was an unknown to me. Uh, it was brought to my attention through an awareness. Um, it's safe to suggest that I would have never found it. And I think that's the beauty of, of, of our audience is this company has been around and in the making for 10 years, okay? So if you're being introduced to the company for the first time, sit back and enjoy because I'm not charging you for this information, okay? Aduro has reached out to me to provide this awareness content. Again, those disclaimers will be provided in the description below. And I am a share owner in the company and a bullish one at that. Um, I'm looking to take a, a long position in the company. This is a, a company that based on the latest timelines that have been released through the corporate presentation from Aduro um, is gonna take a little bit of time, but there's been some recent catalyst here in the company and Penny just did a, um, an interview about 10 months ago, and we're able to kind of track the progress of the company up to this point. So Penny, if you would just give kind of a brief uh, introduction for our audience that may not know about Aduro Clean Technologies and what solutions that they're bringing to bear in the marketplace, please. Well, uh, Aduro to me is truly three separate very distinct verticals that could each be their own multi-billion dollar company. Agreed. But when it comes down to it, they have figured out, you know, I'll start with the plastics, but they have figured out a way to turn, you know, to essentially recycle plastics into new raw material. And they can do this with three different types of plastics. I don't know anyone else who can do the same thing. Um, they yeah. can do bitumen upgrading. So taking that like heavy crude oil, and, and turning it into a lighter crude, which has a much higher value, easier to flow. Yep. Uh, and then the renewable oils, which um, is essentially creating diesel. So it's it's a very broad, uh, broad category of capabilities, but it all comes yep. out of some very, um, very mm -hmm. distinct and interesting chemistry. It's called hydrochemolytics. So yeah. I know a lot of people aren't particularly interested in uh, in chemistry, but I'm a bit of a nerd. And when you look at all the different companies that are trying, you know, let's just focus on plastics. So many companies are in the market trying and yeah. most of them use pyrolysis, which is essentially burning, which, you know, you burn things. There's a lot of waste. Um, Aduro so far has the absolute best answer. You know, you get a high margin of 
high margin of profit, but also a, a very high percentage of the product survives the process. So for me, that's that's truly unique IP. And that's that's what I'm looking for. I'm never looking for a company that has something that somebody else has. Penny, I, I, I interview CEOs all the time on the channel and I have a 100% success rate of CEOs being bullish on their own company. So <laughs> is there any type of validation that Aduro has subjected their IP to to say, no, this isn't really just coming from internal. It's been validated along the way. And, you know, as an investor, I would sit back and say, sure, Penny, right? This is the same old story. This is a pre-revenue company. So for people to understand and put some context around the story, we're talking about a 40 million US market cap company and it is unknown, okay? Now the hydrochemolytic uh, technology that you refer to in-house IP, Aduro owns all of it. Very important to understand that can unfold with your own due diligence. You can find that on the website, all right? But, but, but very, very, um, very safe to understand that for 10 years up to this point, this company strikes me as a very, very close to the vest company, okay? And in the little bit of information that I've been really hungry to find online, you can find all kinds of information about the problem that Aduro is looking to solve. And that's the 320 million tons of plastic that's being produced every single year, which is expected to increase over time. And then we've got some government mandates in 2025, which makes the Aduro clean technology right on the forefront. And I feel like me and you talking about it tonight, there's going to be people out there who are like, what? We don't re recycle plastic, which was my impression before I got into this project. You speak on that a little bit. So recycling plastic is, you know, it really depends where you live. I'm, you know, I live in the U.S. Of course, Aduro is a Canadian company and, yeah. and I believe the majority of their shareholders are. Fortunately, it's traded on the OTC. But you know, when you put your plastics in with the rest of your recycling, you know, a couple of years ago, it was almost a guarantee, unless you were in, you know, a few select jurisdictions, that it was just going on a boat, going to China. I think they used to accept like 25 million tons a year That's of right. our garbage. Yeah. You know, great business if you've got land to stack it. And, you know, it's not like we were sending it to China for recycling. We were sending it to China for their land filling. So a lot of yeah. a lot of the laws are changing and and the companies who we were or the countries we were essentially taking advantage of with with these deals are by and large saying no this isn't a good idea. Yeah. So we're we're left with you know we we now have producer responsibility you know being enacted into law you've got that 2025 limit. So you know what is recycling? I, there's very few methods to, I, we say plastic, like it's one thing. Yes. If you look at your recycling chart, you'll see that there's, you know, seven primary types of plastic. Yeah. And, you know, if you get into the chemistry, they are long chain hydrocarbons and the way that they're put together is all distinctly different. Yeah. So the way they need to be taken apart is distinctly different. So, uh, you know, a Duro can, a Duro can handle uh, polypropylene, polyethylene, and let polystyrene. Me yeah, polystyrene. Uh, polystyrene. Thank you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. foam. Um, but the uh, the difference, you know, polypropylene, um, if you look at Pure Cycle, I, yeah. I, Pure Cycle seems to be the company that most people who are thinking about this know about because That's it's bad. it's on the big board. It's got like a one point one billion dollar valuation. Yep. And they have today. One trick. Yes, ma'am. One trick. They can handle that polypropylene. Right, which is you know like fishing line, and it's I mean there's a lot of things that are made out of out of polypropylene, but right. um, it's polyethylene, the PET. That's that's plastic bottles. It's it's garbage bags. That's uh, as I was telling uh, Abe uh, Dyke with with the Duro just the other day. I'm like that's the only one moms really care about. This mm. is the this is a plastic that is is just so ubiquitous. And we know that no matter what we try to do to recycle, it's not happening. It's a topic that is near and dear to my heart. And for the few content creators that are trying to provide awareness to this story, um, I've been investing my whole life 
Um, I looked at the Aduro opportunity, had finished my due diligence before the Game Changer program. I assessed a value just over their IP in between about 80 and 100 million. That was my own independent. That was a little bit on the low end, I thought. I thought when the Game Changer program was announced, and for anybody that does not know, you need to get into the know, okay? And again, I'm not looking to hype. Again, I've invited you to Las Vegas or the theme parks. That's not what this is. This is serious business. And this is awareness on a company that not a lot of people have awareness on. You need to get there. Because for you guys that have been sleeping under a rock for the last couple of months, Shell Oil has just accepted Adoro into their Game Changer program, which I have a question mark now on the value of their IP, and rightfully so. Um, I had a much better idea before. Now, I, I would be, I would venture to guess in the 250 to $300 million range, just over their proprietary IP. Um, now, there's some things that have to fall into place uh, with that Game Changer program. But for me, I take a step back. Aduro is an easy company to invest in just because their initiatives are in the right place. And up till about two months ago, I'm 45 years old. I thought that when plastics were dropped in the recycle bin and they left my home, that they went to a good cause. And that is absolutely upside down in what people should understand about what happens with their plastic. Right, Finny? That's that's exactly it. It's you know, it, it's core to the the concept of recycling. I think most people, you know, people 40 and below have grown up with recycling being a, a given. Yep. There's a garbage can, there's a recycling can. How that works in every house is different, but, you know, we're, we're trained to recycle and the assumption is that it's actually happening. So uh, it's very expensive for, for municipalities to handle waste. And in this, this is where the opportunity really presents itself. Uh, you know, I, I've mentioned, I mentioned pure cycle before, like I said, they've got a evaluation over a billion dollars. Don't yeah. actually own the IP. But they are farther, they're farther along and they, they do have big support. So my in my ideal world, there's probably about 10 names in the in the plastics recycling world. In my ideal world, they all succeed. Um, awesome. Competition's absolutely good for any business, but we need more and more techniques. But where a Duro stands out is the low capex and the modular design. So you can do a 25 ton plant with a Duro, a lot less CapEx. And it's, it doesn't have to be, you know, centralized. You don't have to build a 250,000, you know, ton plant and have all the, the, the recycling materials come to you. Well, Manufacturers so can create their own and, and the margins are good enough. I think it's about 50%. 50. Yeah. Just a little that less. The payback, right. I, I think it's like a six year payback last time That's um, right. I worked out the math with, um, with the guys at Aduro and Incredible. I'm sure things have, have been changing and moving since then, but, but yeah. still six year payback on a very critical thing made even more critical when the legislation is, uh, <laughs> is, is telling you it's a must do. So I, I think it's an I ideal time for, um, you know, for, for people to be finding Aduro. I agree. Um, I think, and, and to listen to uh, Ofervai, because he's the CEO and also part of the board of directors, um, it, it's interesting to hear him talk. It seems to me to be an absolute blue ocean. Um, the, 10, the 10 companies that you speak of, Penny, are still in the beginning stages of their technology. Um, you know, first cycle that you mentioned, which was a SPAC off of Procter & Gamble, if I'm not mistaken, um, they're not making any money yet. OK, so don't think for a second that these processes are established. And you mentioned it earlier on in the interview with these complex chemicals. Uh, Abe Dyke does a fantastic job of, of, of kind of giving the analogy that Aduro is different because they go into that complex uh, mo molecule. Right. And they deconstruct it. They don't blow it up. They deconstruct it in a smart way. And they do it in a way that does not require the hydrogen infusion. And they do it in a way that does not require the heat process. And we're talking high heat, and which speaks to the destructive process. 
So if you really start to internalize and separate how different Aduro is, you mentioned the 25,000, you know, of, of, of feedstock that they could, so they can really accommodate those lower markets as well as those markets where the jurisdictions are tricky to get into. It's all open right now, Penny, all of it. There's no established anything. And I'm doing my very best. My bull case is set. Okay. Now I do what any good savvy investor does. I look at the other coin of it and I force myself to look at the bear case of this company. And I'm having a difficult time to find it because I'm finding a lot of voids and a lot of need in the industry for this. And it's making me a lot more aware in that everything we touch from day to day, everything that we consume, everything that is involved in our day to day life, we cannot proceed through our day without touching plastic in some form or fashion. And we're all single entities, you know, with what, 8 billion people on, on the earth. You just think of the consumption there and the blue ocean need and the beginning of, of this stepping in. So when we're talking about a pretty large sandbox to play in, when we speak about these few players in competition, I think you're right. I think there's room for everybody. And I think the, the, the sky is the limit. And I, I think these large companies are really under the press to try to quickly identify which of these solutions are going to work, which is going to benefit uh, everybody in the space. Would you agree? Absolutely. And, and I take the, I take the in incremental success of all the other companies out there as, you know, if, if they're ahead in one area, you know, it's, it's a, a bit of pathfinding for, for a Duro. Yeah. But yeah. when you, would you talk about the scale of the investment? So the, the reason I brought up Pure Cycle is we, I, I, I listened to, I say, I listen, I read a great article on it the other day. Yeah. And at the end of the article, I thought, man, if I didn't know about Aduro, I'd be yeah. pretty excited about Pure Cycle because yeah. it's great technology. Yes. Um, but then when you start to look and say, wow, you know, th that SPAC deal, so much money went into that. And that is a huge yeah. clue on not just what a big problem it is. We all acknowledge that the plastic is a problem, but business doesn't care about problems. Business cares about money. money. Yep. So, hey, $1.1 billion of, of money risked on this concept. And so that, that tells me that when we're sitting at a $40 million market cap, that we're in a very safe spot. And I mean, I'm, I don't know what your portfolio looks like, but a Duro is is a gem right now being up 82% in the past six months Bingo. with all of the tides in the market. It's because people are starting to figure it out. Now, I mean, I tell you, that's why I'm typically in, in the, you know, small cap space is because I'm looking to find out before everybody knows and have time to do that due diligence so that when it's, when it's time, I've been able to do the bear work and look and see, see what the, what the problems are. And, you know, for, for me, every list of, of problems I had set out, you know, when we talked about third party, right. It's not, yeah. this doesn't work because, you know, over Vicus says it works. They have a third party come in and examine the technology and better yet for shareholders that was done as a milestone where, you know, that equity yeah. that's unlocked for the executives doesn't happen until they are they are making things happen for their shareholders. Yeah. So and then this the Shell Game Changer program, you know, for Shell to have attached their name to Aduro, letting Aduro use their logo, letting Aduro talk means that they did a lot of due diligence. Now, I'm just a firefighter. I am not a chemist. I guarantee that Shell did not send their firefighters in to do their well, due diligence. You know, well they, said. they brought in their big chemical engineers to look at the process and decide. And the whole point of it is to help these companies scale and yep. scale is a really scary term in the small cap world. So can you scale? Well, you can scale when you have partners and they've kept the share, you know, they've, they've kept the share structure so tight. It is. Mm -hmm. that 
you know, that, that, that would be, you know, for me, the bear case is, well, at some point they're going to have to raise money, right? Which sweet. At some point I'm going to have the ability to make a block buy, you know, that's, that's how I hear it because that them needing to raise money at some point in the future is only going to come because there's an expansion. So it, it'll yeah. prove that we're on the right, right path. I love it when the bear bull and the bear points start crossing each other out. So it makes well me said. a happy girl. Well said. Um, for you guys that are unaware, um, the last press release on the acceptance of Aduro to the Shell Ga Game Changer program was released. It is a one page document and it is well worth five minutes of your life to spend extrapolating, read it slow, because what Penny's talking about, it talks about the rigor that went into that application process. Um, my understanding is that there, Aduro was not the only uh, name in the hat. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was kind of the opposite where Aduro's technology proved itself out uh, at some point in the process of rigor and evaluation of the company and was hand selected. I'm gonna talk about not only the funding assistance to Aduro, but also think about the expertise in-house in Shell. Shell is a who's who in big oil. It is a who's who. It is in the top five. They are on the cutting edge of being that renewable player. This is what is going on now. This is the movement. This is the front of the wave where people, even who are for or against the green initiative, or they are for or against tree hugging, it doesn't matter. People are taking more awareness and saying, what can I do to do my part in this whole thing? And it feels really good for a Duro to be tackling th this small aspect to it. But for those of you guys that um, don't understand how big this Aduro um, and Game Changer program uh, through Shell is, I would highly encourage you to kick over to adurocleantech.com, uh, kick over to that uh, press release that actually explains that, and you'll be learned up on how exciting that is. And what it could mean for the corporate presentation that outlined a time frame of scale that you talked about, Penny, up until 2027, 20, I would suggest potentially that my bottom line assessment that that timeline has been shifted to the left now. Where? I don't know. And I don't care. But they were going to have to raise money to step through the pilot to R2 to R3 to make sure that there was a commercially viable product and they were gonna have to find financing somewhere. Now Shell is stepping in with that financial assistance and to expect that it's gonna be until 2027, I think is fairly short-sighted. I think we could potentially have our answers much sooner than that in that timeline. And they have not updated that timeline on their corporate presentation. And that's something I'm looking forward to as well, because just knowing that everything we've been told was without this new champion. Now, normally when I look at companies, I want to know who their champions are as far as individual shareholders, nice. right? But when you see, you know, little Aduro, $40 million market cap, and then this big multi-billion dollar company coming in, and and I, I see it as a lot of, um, not just a lot of validation, but there are a lot of companies trying to make this work. And Hydrochemalytics is a truly unique brand of chemistry. I, I think Abe said it once that it's more, you know, instead of destroying the, the molecules, that it's more like yeah. taking a scalpel to them. And, yeah. uh, you know, I'm, I am so excited to watch the next year of growth and, and see yeah. where, where we end up. But I think it, it will be a lot farther in the process than they had in, initially anticipated. Well, hold on a second. For my viewing audience that just heard you out, the stock goes up 25% next week. You're not going to sell the company. That's surprising. Yeah. What, what no, about, I'm what about a, oh, oh, okay. So six so, months from now, if the company is up 100%, you're going to sell the company, right? No. This is the short-sighted application that we're really trying to, and I'm not trying to be smart. 
the reason why I brought Penny in is, first of all, I like to surround myself with successful people, okay? This is not my wheelie house. For people who have been enjoying my content for a long time, knows that I have amassed wealth based on value investing. The problem that I find that people fall victim to all the time is they succumb to one style and they will not hear any other investing disciplines. In investing in the stock market is one of those things that you will never have it all figured out. And for the people that really humble themselves and say, what is it that I need to learn? Not, oh my goodness, what do I know? And continue to try to regurgitate what it is that you know are probably better off to actually evolve as a stock market investor. And that's what we're really trying to do by just talking over the last 25 minutes about a name that I was unaware of four months ago. And I'm with you on the long-term perspective. I don't know where that timeline is going to shift to. The numbers out to 2027 and how they were going to seek out scale was incredible. Now we have a lot of answers with regard to the support that's going to be rendered to Aduro in the close collaboration. And that's why we will leave the management alone. That's why me and you are talking right now and trying to provide that awareness to the grander viewing audience through YouTube and social media to just take a look. I, I've also, you know, if you don't like what you see, don't buy the stock. <laughs> we're, we're, we're in an age right now where you can sit, sit back and you can maybe discover a company that you wouldn't have discovered on your own. And I want to give you the last word here, Penny, on giving your kind of your bullish conviction and also make sure that you've, you know, you touch on anything that you think is super important that maybe we missed in this interview. Penny? Uh, well, <laughs> there's a lot. <laughs> Just... Conviction <laughs> right here. You know, we know there's a real problem. Nobody's going to argue that. We know that they have a real solution. No one's arguing that. Um, and the 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 smart money has started to find a duro that that means a lot to to the the penny investors you know i yeah. i'm known for for picking penny stocks but it's not because i want penny stocks i want big stocks i just want to get them early and i want that big run but when i see that the shareholder mix is starting to change less penny flippers and more people who who are really looking at this Investors. as a as a long term investment. When I initially yeah. called this out to my group, I year and a half ago, it was as a long term investment. Like yeah. there's, you know, I I like making money. I trade options. That's where I, you know, that's that's where that's where I get my my excitement. But I want to watch a company grow and and continue. And yeah. with the leadership that they have. You know they're they're all very serious, which is yeah, sometimes are. difficult for me because I'm not. But they're they're very serious and humble guys. But they're more focused on the problem than they are on, you know, the me 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 part of it. So I, those are those are things outside of the basic fundamentals that make me like the stock. I also like the chart. But like I said, the chart doesn't truly matter to me when my investment horizon is, you know, I, I always say two to five on a long term stock. I plan on holding a duro for a very long time until yeah. maybe its name isn't even a duro. Maybe yeah. it's three companies by then. Yeah, well so. said. Well said. We didn't even talk about their other two verticals. Folks, you're just going to have to turn in, uh, tune into AduroCleanTech.com, start to do your own due diligence. The whole point to this within a 30 minute is uh, an acknowledgement that we cannot hit it all for you. Okay. But I do think that it's very prudent to mention when Penny mentioned the solution itself um, being a low, a low heat. Okay. The hydrochemaletic is done at, at a low heat. Okay. So therefore, it's a low cost, lower cost to input. And that's what is attractive on a large scale when you're looking at putting, you know, multiple tons through these potential processors is that they're not having to bring, you know, a unit up to 600 to 1000 degrees. That all takes energy input. Okay. So some of the solutions out there, you have to be very, very careful at in that they're a neutral solution and that the cost that's going in, unfortunately, is the cost that's going out for a net neutral type of solution. 
yes, that might produce, uh, a, 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 you know, a, 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 a type of product on the on the back end that can be utilized. But a Duro is a lot different in that the input costs are significantly lower. And I think that was a key key takeaway from this. Look, folks, for me, um, being a forty million dollar market cap, um, you're getting in on the ground floor. Um, my entry was uh, in between the 50 and 60 cent mark. I'm just as excited as you who probably got it significantly lower than me because I think the upside potential is really limitless on this pot potential opportunity. You talk about the disparity between the current niche uh, market in the specific niche micro sector and the disparity between Aduro as it sits at 40 and some of the companies that we've mentioned over a billion dollar market cap really speaks on the gap that needs to be closed between that. And it's just a matter of time. I think your point about the stock moving north um, at the clip that it has in the face of what has been an absolutely horrendous market, no stocks are getting favor. Stocks are being discredited right now. There is no credit for future potential of revenue, zero credit. Whereas in a normalized market, there's a little bit more of an anticipation and a little bit more animal spirits. I, I really do like that analogy, but right now it's sell everything and talk to me later. Nothing is getting any type of favor. And I think it's important to note that in the face of that, pretty poor markets over the last 18 months have chronicled it. Aduro has really stood the test of time over that um, that current. But um, uh, any other last words you have, Penny, by chance, before we shut her down and, and turn it over to the to the evening? No, sadly, I could talk about Aduro for a couple hours. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I know, I know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you guys with this. Um, I'll leave the chemistry out of it for a for yeah, the day. Yeah, thank God. That's uh, but awesome. I'm, I'm really excited to have other eyes on Aduro. I think it's a, you know, yeah. it's an astonishingly, astonishingly good investment. You know, full disclosure, I'm invested. So there's a little yeah. bit of bias there, but it's it's sure. not without the the hard work put in to, to figure out what I was buying. Yeah, fantastic. On behalf of the Independent Investor Channel, um, this is uh, Penny Queen's debut, and I don't want it to be the last. It's been a real pleasure to meet you um, and listen to your philosophies about stock market investing. I think selfishly, it actually makes me a better investor. And I thank you for sharing your insights. I know our audience will benefit from it as well. Thank you so much, Penny. Thank you, Ryan. Good beer. Yep. Yep.